Since childhood, we have been told that the most important thing is this, tell the truth. Cast our memories back to our, the father of our country, George Washington, revered as one of the greatest presidents, if not the greatest. There's a story that we like to tell about George Washington as a boy, where he received a hatchet as a birthday present. His father returned home at the end of the day, found his beloved cherry tree hacked to pieces, and he called his son over and he said, George, do you know anything about this? To which little Georgie replied, Father, I cannot tell a lie. I chopped down the cherry tree. Of course, that story, extolling the importance of being honest, is not even true. Never mind that. Let's talk about another president who we also regard as one of our greatest. This is a gentleman who kept the Union together during a time of great civil war. He emancipated the slaves. He was known for his remarkable abilities as an orator, as a speech writer, a speech maker, so much so that high school students in America are tortured to this day having to remember the lines of his speeches. And yet, with all of these different attributes that made him remarkable, we don't think of him as limber-lipped Lincoln. We don't think of him as Abe the author. We think of him as honest Abe. Again, it was honesty that was pointed to as the key quality. And part of honesty is telling the truth. Well, unfortunately, I'm here to deliver the bad news that we have been misled. No longer should we be telling the truth. In fact, we should never tell the truth. Instead, we should be selling the truth. Now, I'm gonna explain what that actually means in a little bit more detail, but first let me start with what it does not mean. I am not here to advocate lying, telling stories, making things up, betraying your audiences, quite the contrary. In fact, truth is under assault, like no time in our lives or perhaps in history. Misinformation is coming out from sources that would have been unthinkable even a few short years ago. And what this does is underscore the importance of making sure that lies do not become part of our day-to-day -day basis, but that instead we focus on making sure that the truth comes to, comes, to, <clears throat> comes to the fore. Now, in my business, I work in public relations and crisis management. There, in case you haven't noticed, sometimes PR people have a bit of a dodgy reputation. People accuse us of being hacks or flax or spin doctors. These are the terms that they use to describe us all of which are meant to suggest that we dance around the truth or that we're spinning the truth. And, and that's not necessarily the case. In fact, the main thing that we tell to all of our clients, whether they're organizations who are looking to spread their message or they're individuals who are facing a crisis, is to sell the truth and to be honest, to always be honest. Because the fact of the matter is, reputations take many years to build. But in a flash, they can come crumbling down. The brand equity that your organization builds up based on your good actions can dissipate in a moment if you make bad decisions or if you lie. And for that reason, it's important to always be honest. And I take this very seriously. In fact, I consider it the why of my organization that I lead. And we view our ultimate mission as to fight for the truth. And I'm gonna give you an example now of what it means, the difference between simply telling the truth and selling the truth. Telling the truth the old way, that's reactive. It's passive, it's weak, it's slow. Selling the truth, on the other hand, is proactive. It's assertive, aggressive even, fast, strong, confident. It's the difference between hoping that your message gets out there one day versus making sure that it gets out there. It's the difference in reacting and waiting to see what other people are saying about you and then trying to set the record straight, or you seizing the initiative, you defining yourself, your institution, your organization before someone else does. So I'm gonna tell you a quick story about one of our clients. I can't give you the specifics um, because they rely on us for our confidentiality, but this is an individual who was working in finance and was discriminated against by his employer. The employer treated him very badly. He was harassed at work, and ultimately, he was pushed out of his job. 
he was denied earnings that he had rightfully made. And when he went to the CEO of the equity firm, he said, this isn't right. You guys treated me differently. You discriminated against me. And you've denied me my money that I have rightfully earned. And I've been a great employee for the company. To which he was told, too bad, goodbye, sue us if you want. Now, if he had been looking to go with the old model and simply tell the truth, he could have just waited for his day in court. He could have just waited months or perhaps even years in hopes that the truth would come out. Instead, he decided that he was going to work with us, so we were going to advise him on how he could, in fact, sell the truth. And so what we did was we made a few phone calls to some reporters, and we let them know what had happened to this individual. And it wasn't long before they picked up the phone and they called the CEO of the company that had discriminated against him. And when he realized that the reputation that he had built up over years at his company was about to be destroyed, that people all the world over were going to see what had taken place there, he thought twice about it. And he made the right decision, and he ended up making the situation correct. He paid the man what he was owed, and he allowed him to go on with his life. The problem with waiting and simply telling the truth is that perceptions take hold. But perceptions are reality. Let me say that again. Perception is reality. How people perceive you, how they think of you, that determines with a whole range of people who are going to ultimately never have an opportunity to come into contact with you. Think about it. You can only interact with a certain number of people over your lifetime. However, in the age of the internet, you can interact literally with millions or tens of millions or even billions of people online. So again, it, it, call, it calls to you and says, what is the decision you're going to make? Are you going to simply tell the truth or are you going to sell the truth? The bottom line is you cannot sit on the sidelines and watch. Instead, you have to press play. You have to get in the game. You have to be an advocate, advocate for yourself, for your organization. If you're not willing to do that, then other people are going to do it for you. And the odds are the way that they're describing you, the way that they're talking about you, whether accurate or not, they're not the way that you're going to want it to be done. So we must really decide, are we willing to influence the way that the world sees us, or are we simply going to wait to be defined? So how can we get better at this? Well, part of it is the message itself. Obviously, what you say makes a huge difference. But even arguably more importantly is how do you say it? And when you're conveying these messages, the key is to be authentic and to be real. That's what makes all these people internet famous. That's why they have tens of millions of followers. That's why some people log on to watch individuals play video games and comment on it. It's because they perceive them to be authentic and they perceive them to be real. And for companies that are out there that are thinking to themselves, well, people are casting stones at us online. They're saying things that are not true. We're not going to dignify them with the response. That's the old way of thinking. You cannot afford to do that anymore. The facts speak for themselves and the numbers don't lie. 86% of people who make a purchasing decision say that reading negative reviews or negative comments influenced their decision whether or not they were going to buy or not. We know also that people are, four are likely to spend four times longer reading through negative comments as they are positive ones. So in this day and age, there are more options than ever before for us to tell our stories, for us to not just tell a truth, but to sell a truth. And in some ways, it's scary, but it's also very exhilarating and very liberating. So the challenge that I offer to you today is this. How can you, in your own life, become better at selling the truth? What do I mean by that? As you go through your life, are there opportunities that you have to bring positivity into the world, to be authentic, to be real, to speak to the people who have the biggest impact on your life and let them know what they've done for you and how much you appreciate it? If you go on a date with someone a couple of times, yes, you can send them a text message, thanks, had a good time. That's telling the truth. Or the next time you're together with that person, you can look them in the eye, you can hold their hand, you can create a human connection, and you can say, I really have enjoyed our time together. This is what it's meant to me. I like having you in my life. That's selling the truth. 
So in conclusion, I think it's time that we all need to be honest with ourselves. Are we gonna leave it to chance for the world to define us? Or are we gonna do the hard work of being engaged and active in shaping our own destiny? The world is watching, but it will not wait long for an answer. Thank you.